Hi and welcome. It's becoming increasingly common to find ballistic recovery systems fitted to small aircraft. It's a reassuring safety feature designed as a last resort when the safe landing of an aircraft cannot be assured. The system is made up of two parts, an all aircraft parachute designed to reduce energy and return the aircraft to the surface at a survivable velocity. The second part of the system is a small rocket that drags the parachute from the aircraft at distance where it's able to be deployed. Like all safety critical items, the system requires maintenance and to assure it's going to work when you need it the most, the parachute is sent away for periodic checking and repacking. However, the rocket element cannot be serviced and instead has to be completely replaced. We have a BRS system built into our aircraft and it's time for the rocket to be exchanged. As this is a rare occurrence, I thought you might be interested in seeing what's involved. Plus, if you hang on to the end, you'll get to see what we did with the old rocket. Okay, so we're, we've picked up the rockets and they're in this box. Come as two parts. So I'm not sure what that is. There's two rockets in here. I think that's the pro that's the propellant. Uh, this one's the propellant, and this one is the actual rocket part. But got some paperwork. So let's get it to the maintenance organisation. So with the goods safely on board, it's just a short 10 minute flight where our maintenance organisation are based to get the rocket replaced. After taking nearly six months from the date of order, we have received our replacement just one day before the existing rocket's expiry date. Talk about cutting things fine. Anyway, we're here now and they are waiting for me. First thing the engineers need to do is to remove the old rocket from the aircraft. They take the egress cover off for access and disconnect the rocket lanyards from the parachute. They then gingerly remove the activation handle cable from the base of the rocket and working upside down in a very confined area, underneath the instrument panel, they remove the whole thing from the firewall including the launch tube. With the rocket and the tube now removed from the aircraft, they remove the launch base or detonator from the bottom of the rocket, making the whole thing much safer to handle. With the system in pieces, you can see all the individual parts. Here's the launch tube, this is the launch base, and the rocket itself with the parachute lanyard still attached. For safety, the new rocket system is supplied completely dismantled, so it has to be built up again. They start by inserting the solid fuel into the new rocket. They then screw on the rocket cap to keep everything in place. They then connect the launch base to the bottom of the rocket. It has a locking wire to stop it being accidentally triggered. The completed rocket is now inserted into the new launch tube, ensuring the parachute lanyards exit the tube at the correct place. The completed rocket system is now ready to be reinstalled. They connect the launch handle cable and rebolt the launch tube and the rocket to the firewall. The launch tube is then adjusted to ensure that the rocket's trajectory will take it clear of the airframe. The lanyards are then reattached to the parachute. So that's it. They've just got to seal it all back up again and that will be good for a few months as in January the parachute soft pack has to come out to be sent to Germany to be checked and repacked as part of its six yearly maintenance schedule. With it all back in the aircraft and checked, all that remains is to safely dispose of the old rocket and launch base. There is a procedure for this which involves removing all the solid fuel from the rocket. In our rocket we have three cylindrical forms of fuel, or as BRS calls them, grains. We take the grains and cut them into quarters using a chisel on a wooden base. Once all the grains have been cut up, we place them in a metal dish and take them outside. And with fire extinguishers to hand, we light them well away from the hangar. 
We now need to activate the launch base to make it safe. This is the igniter that would set off the rocket when the handle is pulled. BRS says that this has the equivalent of two shotgun charges in it. We place it in a vise and attach a cord to it as per the instructions. This would normally be where the activation handle and cable would be attached to. BRS suggests that the operation of the launch base should take a pull of between 30 to 70 pounds in order to fire it. They also suggest that the cord be pulled at least three to six inches. I always thought these things had a hair trigger, but that's not true. You really do need to deliberately and forcefully pull these to set them off. With everyone out of the way, they give it a yank. Wow, that was so loud. Good job we all had ear defenders on. There's no doubt that these systems add an extra layer of safety to flying light aircraft. However, I've often wondered at what point I would actually pull it. Our aircraft has a low stall speed and is pretty light, so I wouldn't activate it after engine failure, unless I was over water or maybe a forest that I couldn't glide clear of, as off-field landings are totally survivable in the Piper Sport. The only other time I would pull it would be maybe if I had a structural failure in the aircraft that meant I could no longer control it. Whenever I take a non-pilot passenger with me, I always run through the operation of the BRS system, so that should I become incapacitated for any reason, they have an option. We also have a printed passenger safety card in the pocket on the passenger side that shows how to operate the system. BRS, the manufacturer of our system, is very proud of its safety record and attributes over 460 lives saved since 1983 due to light aircraft BRS deployment. So that's just about it. However, we did keep one piece of fuel complete. When we lit this, you can see just how powerful the rocket actually is. And there's three of these in there. BRS systems certainly have their place in light aircraft, and I love the reassurance it gives me in our aircraft. But it's not the only thing I love about it. Why not watch this video next where I give you nine more reasons why I think the Sport Cruiser is the best little fun aircraft around. Well that does it for this time, hopefully you found this video entertaining and interesting, thank you so much for watching, fly safe guys and short field out.